What's up, YouTubers? I'm Eric. This is Stephanie. And we are the Whining, Whining Glampers. Glampers. Today we're going to go over Menage a Trois, which is a red blend from California. It has three different wines. A Cabernet Sauvignon, a Merlot, and a Zinfandel. It is a California red blend. Which is interesting because a lot of the red <laughs> wines do not have Zinfandel in them. Yes, and it's a red Zinfandel. So when you think about Zinfandel, you think about a white, but this is actually a red. And maybe one day we'll get to review a red Zinfandel. But for today, we have our blend. Um, and we're also doing a test. Um, so today's test is going to be um, four different um, criteria. So we have chilled. It's about 50, 55 degrees. We, we threw it in the fridge. And then we have our room temperature, which our thermostat set at 71. So approximately 70, 71 degrees. So really room temperature has been sitting out for a couple days. This one just came out of the fridge. Then we're gonna take this room temperature one and we're going to uh, compare the taste from aerated into the glass and not aerated, just directly from uh, the bottle. So that is our test for today um, to see if we notice any differences in the flavor of the, the wine itself, which I think I'm gonna make a prediction because uh, if anybody knows, reds, they say to keep at room temperature, but they really should be a little bit chilled. Um, and the flavor, usually in my experience, when you chill your uh, red wines, um, they actually turn a little bit sweeter. That's my experience. So that's gonna be my prediction. Do you have a prediction? Uh, not yet. <clears throat> okay. All right, so this class is the non-chilled. This is the chilled. So start with the non-chilled. Okay. Um, and just give me an idea of what you smell and what you see. Uh, fruit. It's okay if you don't smell anything. I do. Beyond. I smell fruit. Like anything in particular. Some some wines you can really, really smell, like certain fruits, like plum or I think you this know, when is, they say um, raspberry. All right, so that's the room temperature. I taste the raspberry. There is another fruit in there as well. Mm -hmm. It is very smooth, uh, very silky. Mm -hmm. Very uh, medium bodied. So for those people that maybe are, have moved outside of that Pinot Noir, um, you know, lightness into a little bit heavier with a little bit more body and texture, but not that really heavy Cabernet kind of uh, like heaviness. Um, very light, uh, very mild. Do you think it's the Merlot and Zinfandel that actually <clears throat> brings that down uh, from a bold body? Um, I'm thinking it's actually the Zinfandel the that Zinfandel takes inside. that tones it down. The Zinfandel is going to be um, a lighter wine, so it's going to tone that stuff down. Um, I believe Zinfandels they use a lot in sangria, actually, because of the little bit of sweetness in it. Yeah, sangria. <clears throat> Cabernet Sauvignon also typically has that bold, mm -hmm. um, you know, taste to it. Yeah. Where this does not. Yeah. And a Merlot is a little bit lighter too. The Cabernet is going to be the the heaviest, the darkest. All right. <clears throat> this wine is about um, thirteen point six percent alcohol. Mm hmm And you can actually tell. Yeah. The alcohol level. You swirl it on your glass and you yeah, actually look at it and see how long it takes. Yeah, see the legs. Mmm, <clears throat> it 
Interesting. Okay, so let me take that again. <clears throat> Go ahead and try that. I'm not gonna say anything until you actually do it. I did notice a difference. So to me, the fruit taste is more pronounced. Mm -hmm. There was, this is very smooth, so there is no hard bite aftertaste, mm -hmm. but it actually went down uh, smoother mm -hmm. and finished softer for me. Yes. Now, here's the big question because everyone says it's a big no-no to put your red wine in a refrigerator, unless it's one of those blends that are like the really light ones that should be served cold. You know, you have your sangrias, but then you have some of your like patio blends that are supposed to be summery light, right? And served chilled, um, a lot of your fruit wines. Which one did you like? Did you, did you, uh, did you like the cold or the, the warm, the room temperature I like the any better than the other? I did, I liked the cold better. Yeah. And to that about what wine should be chilled and what wine shouldn't, I honestly think that is a personal preference. And that if you like the taste of it, mm -hmm. that you should do it. You should not let wine snobs tell you and <clears> dictate <throat> what you should and should not do. How to drink your wine. If you enjoy the experience, um, I say that's the best way to do it. You just keep on whining. Keep on whining. All right, I like that. And probably depending on the, the time of year and stuff too. Like if we were barbecuing right now. That would be so good. That would be so good with some chicken and like grilled vegetables. Mm. But this might be more along the lines of if like we had some pasta or if we had, if you had a steak and potato. That. So uh, I, I think it depends on what you're doing at the time too. If I'm sitting outside like on the deck and I'm not eating anything, I'm just chilling out, I would probably want that's nice a, and chilled. That's a great point because the chilled to me seems more summery, outdoor barbecue, mm -hmm. a picnic, etc. Mm -hmm. This seems to be a with a dinner uh, type of meal or even an after dinner. Yeah. Well, I also think that's one of the benefits that you'll find with blends like this that have that little bit of like the mild, but it's still fruity is it's versatile where some of the other um, heavier wines, like a straight up Cabernet, most of the time you really don't want it cold, but that's gonna be another test for another day, a full one cap. Um, but here for this one, I think it's very versatile. I think because of the, the different blend in the fruit. So the next thing we're gonna do is the aerated versus non-aerated. And we're gonna use the room temperature just because it's like the, the standard practice. Okay. So I'm going to pour the room temperature again into this one um, without the aerated. And then I'm going to go ahead and put the aerator on here. And it takes a little bit longer because it does. It gets that air up in there. Um, it's almost like you have uh, opened the bottle to let it uh, aerate on its own. So we'll, we'll see. So I'd like to suggest something. <clears throat> This one is not aerated. Yep. This one is. Mm -hmm. Let's first test and then let's see how much we can aerate this just by. All right, we'll try it like this now and then we'll. I should do this one first. Yep. That is a great one. I like it. Mm. Mm -hmm. Different um, experience on the palate. Mm -hmm. So it was um, lighter. I think it actually went wider across my tongue and I got to experience uh, more of the taste. It's almost very much sweeter. It is. Than the regular. Also, I feel like it's closer to the chilled taste. It is. Yeah. Yeah. And this glass is not chilled anymore. Yep. So let's see. 
we can actually. Do you want a spoon? You can stir it. <laughs> <laughs> we will see if we can aerate this to give us the same experience and actually give us, hopefully, a sweeter taste when we first put it in. I don't think it makes as much different as the aerator. Mm -hmm. I think the aerator actually does um, lighten it, lighten it, and a quicker job of it. And there you have it. And there is our review. <laughs> if you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. Please join us for more videos and more camping and glamping, glamping activities. activities. Peace. <laughs> We're such dorks.